I'm uh, Professor David John Williams. I'm uh, at the University of Queensland, where I've, I've been for about uh, 40 years or so. And the course that I'm running through as IMM is Tailings Management, a professional certificate course, started in 2020. Yeah, just for those that uh, don't fully appreciate, uh, uh, so the, the ore is mined and typically the, the ore, if it's a metalliferous ore, is crushed and ground to expose the, the commodity that you're after, put through a processing plant, and then the waste product from that is essentially the tailings. It usually comes out as a watery slurry and that may be thickened and then pumped off to a tailing storage facility, usually behind a dam, sometimes in pit. I think one of the things we're starting to realise with tailings is that we tend to design tailings facilities on the surface um, for the operational life of the mine. We do that for other infrastructure too, like uh, buildings. You know, what's the design life of a high-rise building? It's typically, and when I ask people, they'll guess somewhere between 50 and 100 years. What happens after that period? Do we pull them down? Well, the, the fact is that we haven't had high-rise buildings for longer than about 100 years anyway. So we don't really know. But of course, we maintain them over time. And the rate of failure of, say, a high-rise building is much lower, very much lower than the rate of failure of a tailings facility. So that's one of the, the issues we have to, to sort of face. Um, but this difference between designing for an operational life, which for a mine might be anything from a few years to 100 years, or maybe even longer, um, versus closure. So closure is effectively, after you've finished with the facility, closure is, a, is effectively in perpetuity. Now, being engineers, we have to put a number on that. The number we put on it is typically 10,000 years. Now, we, we can't imagine even 100 years, typically, let alone 1,000 or 10,000 years, but we have to put a number on it. So the 10,000 year period that we take to be in perpetuity forever, uh, then sets our return interval for loading. Now, the two main loading cases for tailings dams are flooding, which might lead to overtopping or use of the spillway, and earthquakes. And over that long period of time, 10,000 years, you're talking about very major events, very major. The biggest flood you can possibly imagine, we call it the probable, probable maximum flood. We even have trouble estimating how big that might be and an earthquake sufficient to cause susceptible materials to weaken. Uh, we call it liquefy sometimes, become a fluid. Um, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you're obviously, if you're in an area of the world such as Chile, where they have very large earthquakes regularly, they regularly test their facilities as to whether they can stand up under an earthquake load. In Australia, we have very little uh, data on earthquakes, less than 200 years, depending on where you are in Australia, of recorded earthquake history, and our earthquakes are small. So our, we haven't had in Australia earthquakes sufficient to cause damage to a tailings dam. But certainly in Chile and, and Peru and other areas, and J Japan, China and other countries, they certainly do. So they, they've been uh, able to test their facilities, if you like, during an operational sort of lifespan. We haven't had that advantage. But I think um, the prudent approach is you have to assume the worst case. You, you assume the probable maximum flood will occur at some stage. You, you assume that an earthquake sufficient to, to weaken your tailings will occur at some stage. And we need to design for that. Now, one of the things I'm trying to, to promote is the idea that let's separate the containment, that is the dam, from the storage of the tailings in behind the dam and make sure that your containment or the dam is a stable structure. That should be our first priority. And then you make the decision, to what extent do we dewater? To what extent do we take the water out of the tailings before we put them in behind this stable structure? And I think we started thinking along those lines, separating those two functions, containment and storage, we'd be a long way towards um, adapting for closure, not just the operational phase. We've got a way to go. This is going to take a generation. You know, you can't uh, convert uh, an old practice into uh, state of the art, the best practice overnight. It's not possible. But new new facilities will have to be designed in a different way. So uh, what we call a greenfield site, a new mine site, will most likely be designed differently in the future from what we've done in the past.